I'm Tony Norton. Uh, I am the analog craftsman. Uh, I've been making large format modular synths for almost 10 years now, nine years and change. Uh, started out, the analog craftsman part came from uh, making walnut cases for modular synths because no one really did it. And it was analog because it was the synthesizers and craftsman because it was the wood. So that's where the name came from. And uh, for Christmas the first year, my wife got me the domain name. So I figured now's the time I got to start doing the business. Um, and it really started uh, in terms of getting into the modules. I was just on forums like Muff Wigglers and Electro Music, and people would say, Oh, I wish that someone made this thing. Someone was like, Oh, I really wish there was a attenuator that had five attenuators in one space. And I said, oh, I can, I can make that. So that was my first module. So I made a, a 5X attenuator. And uh, now it's part of my, you know, production line. But now we've moved into a full voice. We have uh, an oscillator, a couple filters, uh, an envelope, uh, a forthcoming new envelope, a uh, quad envelope, quad VCA, uh, output mixer with a Cinemag uh, balanced output. Um, random looping sequencer, uh, the neural computer, difference rectifier, so a couple West Coast things in large format, and then a bunch of utility things. Um, we have an instrument interface, which is very popular, where you can take your module level down, send it to a, a guitar pedal or something, and then amplify the signal back up, so you can you put it back into the modular. Um, a bypass mute send return, which allows you to um, maybe have one oscillator go into it and then send it out to four different filters and you can audition the filters or you can run them in series or you can do it with effects. You can have different effects processors and turn them on and off. And then we have, you know, bolts and attenuators and things. So this is our new case. Uh, we're debuting it here at uh, Synthplex. It's uh, two separate cases. So you have uh, a single row vertical and a two row sloped um, and the magic number is 29 inches so you can fit 14 uh, Moog unit spaced modules or 17 MOTM spaced modules uh, it's the only case I know of that has uh, tapped holes for both formats so you can put MOTM you can put mod can B in here uh, which is why I made it initially uh, the rails are stainless steel it's a powder coated 6061 aluminum comes in black and white uh, it ships with six well each case comes with uh, this comes with two this comes with four uh, of these bus connectors we have six pin 0.1 spacing dot com we have four pin 0.156 spacing MOTM and three pin 0.156 spacing mod can so uh, you just say what you want you get the modules you have a six pin DIN standard, dot com standard, uh, power interconnects, we, uh, which will work with our own uh, external switching supply. It's one amp uh, and it has a nice uh, screw terminal so that the connector locks in and doesn't come unplugged. Um, that's compatible as well as any of the dot com power supplies if you already have one plugs in or you can use the six pin jumpers from a cabinet you already have to go into the back of these. And also it ships flat. Uh, you assemble it yourself. So $50 shipping instead of $300 shipping. So that's a big difference. Uh, it comes with all the necessary hardware. It comes with uh, these thumb screws. You get enough for the whole cabinet. Um, and they're all the same size. So you don't have to worry about having two different size tie downs. So we also make a skiff case. Uh, skiffs are obviously very popular in Eurorack, having a tabletop thing. Um, another thing you can do with this case because of the slope, uh, I won't move it now because of this shot, but um, you can put it on the back, on the bottom side, and stand it up, and then it's more like a studio case. So it has a slight slope like this, um, and then you just, you know, you just mount your modules the other way. So you can have tabletop or studio. It's eight spaces. Um, it has an attenuator, a 4x multiple, and these format converters, because as you know, Euro is super popular, so it's easier to plug your Euro into that and then this into that. You don't have to have 3.5 to quarter inch cables to connect them. So just value added, and then you get a power supply here. Let me turn
turn that down while I'm talking. Um, you know, power rail indicators, walnut sides, uh, comes with the power supply. So it's sort of a turnkey system. I brought the special Chrome modules because it's a show and it's a custom thing. Um, the case is normally black um, and it has silk screen on here to tell you what all the things are, but I made a special one for the show because I wanted to bring a whole Chrome voice. Um, this is an option on the website. You can drop down and select Chrome module. It's an upcharge because it costs more for the material and all that and the handling. Um, but it was originally something that someone asked me if, if I could do. And so I, made, I got the material and made a prototype panel to make sure we could do it. And then they ended up not buying it, but Tom Hulkenberg loved it and bought you know, a dozen of them. So if you've seen his wall, it's all filled with these Chrome modules. That paid for it. Yeah. So um, this is just a, I have this system in my studio back at the shop and um, you can get it as, a, as an option, but normally they would just, you know, they'd be black, powder coated black with the edges masked like the Moog ones. Um, our panels are not silk screened. They're actually cut. So they're engraved and infilled. So it'll never wear off. Uh, they're hard powder coated and they're not, not anodized. So also has a really durable, not these, but the black ones. It's a really durable finish. And it's just part of our whole look and feel, you know. So they, they cost more than the, than the metal photo ones, but I, it's like a personal thing. I like how they look and sort of they look different than other things. So we have a VCO. It's a uh, Thomas Henry 4046 VCO that we licensed from him uh, and Phonic, who did the PCB. Um, you have saw skew, which is a blend of saw and triangle and octave apart. You have a triangle wave, a sine wave, and a variable pulse width um, square wave here with pulse width modulation, both linear and uh, exponential FM. Next to that, we have our um, 40 or our 2600 clone, our 4072 clone, uh, two input mixer, two attenuating um, CV inputs here. I'll let you uh, hear this. There's that, and we have uh, our special thing is this this switch here, which we call the aggro mode, and uh, it feeds it back. So you get a much more distorted sound out of it. Sorry, I hope I didn't blow up your inner your uh, thing there too. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so there's that. This is a, a random looping sequencer over here, which I'm clocking from the Korg uh, sequencer. So I can send that out to this. And then we get a little like, sample and hold. You can use this. I mean, people are familiar with the Turing machine. It's a Turing machine. Um, it's a shift register that, that fills and dumps. Um, you can put it here for random, like sample and hold. If you like the pattern, you can turn it one way or the other to get eight or 16 steps out of it. Uh, and then you have an amount knob here. Noise output, it's pretty simple. This is our Polyvox filter, which is a clone of the Polyvox VCF, um, which I can switch to here real quick. Sorry, turn that down for you. My knob's a little loose, so. Um, we made it so the input was really hot, so you can really overdrive the input of the. Get some real, like, my friend calls it bananas. It's like, it's in bananas mode. But it gets real noisy and grimy. And the same with this, you can uh, obviously. VCA. So you have four identical channels uh, where the CV is normal to all of them. So you can put one CV in here. We have a, we're gating from the Korg right now, but you can gate from a keyboard or whatever. Um, and it goes to all four. And then there's a bipolar um, initial amount. So you can sort of have it. 
have it be like a drone or you can have it change it a little bit. And then there's a the little knob in the middle which will change it between uh, constantly variable between full linear and full exponential response. So you can sort of dial it in to work with your envelope to be snappier or more smooth or you know, however you... Or you can also use it for CV and audio, you know, whatever. You can set it however you want. And our envelope, which is forthcoming, uh, looks the same but has two knobs. So uh, basically an A and a D. And the middle uh, knob is four modes. And the modes are AD, uh, looping AD, so it can be like an LFO and you can use it for modulation. Gated AD, so when you gate it, it will repeat. And when you stop gating it, it will stop repeating. And then also an ASR mode, so it's a bit more like a standard envelope with an attack and a release and a full sustain when, the, when it receives a gate. Um, and there will be a, a connection on the back so you can normal the envelope to the VCA behind the panel and you don't have to use patch cables. And of course, when you plug something in, it breaks that normally. Uh, and then the last module here is a three channel mixer. Uh, uses a Burr Brown op amp, so it's a high quality uh, amplifier. Has a headphone output. Um, and then a line output, which is mutable. Um, and then a balanced uh, DI output, which is a Cinemag transformer. Noisebug is, is our biggest dealer. Uh, they have the cases. This one is their first one. So these are available in black and white. Um, and the bus boards, I have every bus board. Uh, the Chrome is an option. There's a, obviously a longer lead time because we don't stock them and they're cut to order. Um, but everything in black, these are all production modules that would normally be available.